Hi everyone and welcome back to PDQPD. I'm John Sedwick and if you've watched my PDQPD videos in the past you know that I am a big fan of the G Suite environment. I believe that the Google Docs uh, allow a lot of flexibility for us to use in education and one of the reasons that they're so flexible is that they can be used for a number of different purposes. Today I'm going to show you how to change page orientation in a few of the apps to allow for some of that flexibility. I am currently on the screen here. I am in a Google Doc and it's in the standard orientation that you would normally use to type a paper. But that's not the only reason we might use a doc. We might want it to be oriented differently to be used in different capacities. In order to do that, I'm going to start by going to File and I'm going to scroll down to Page Setup. And if you've never been here before, you have some options on this page that can change the way your document is set up. The first is the orientation, and you can see it's set for portrait, or you can change it to landscape. And while I'm here, I'm going to point out this set as default button. So if you use the landscape orientation a lot, you can set that as your default, and every time a blank document comes up, it will be set as landscape orientation. The second thing I'll show you is the number of different paper sizes you can use, and you can see there's a pull down menu here to choose one of the preset sizes. Down here is the page color, and if a lot of kids like to work on colored paper, it makes it just feel a little bit different than just the standard blank white page. You can go to page color and select the color that you want for your page, and here under margins, you can set how much of a margin you want left, right, top, and bottom. And again, if you want to leave that as your default, you can click the set as default. But for now, I'm just going to change it to landscape and look at the color to see what the page will look like. When I click OK, you can see that it went to a landscape orientation and it changed my background to a blue. And at this point, I can start typing just like I could any other document, but it's set with a different orientation. Now next, I'm going to jump over here to a Google slide. Now, in a Google slide presentation, in the vast majority of the time, we use it as a presentation tool, and that's great. But you could also use this to create newsletters, student-created books, and all kinds of different things. So I'll show you how to change the orientation here to allow that to happen. It's very similar. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to scroll down to Page Setup. And this time, you don't see the standard portrait or landscape orientation. All you have here is some of these windows that change the way it's going to look. However, if I go down to custom, I have an option to set my own numbers here in inches, centimeters, points, or pixels. And I'm going to leave this for inches, and I'm going to change this to eight and a half by 11 for a standard piece of paper. And when I click OK, you can see that it's effectively changed it to a portrait orientation. Now you could use, treat this almost as a document, add your pictures in, you can use some of the alignment tools and so forth. And you'll notice here when I add a new slide, it also has that orientation. So you could use this like you would a slide deck with your students, but give every student a page of the book. And then when you go to export it, or, or download I should say, you could download the document as a PDF and then put it together like you would a standard book. So that's the way you can use the page orientation in slides. Now the next one I'm going to show you here is drawings. And most people think of drawings as just a, an image manipulator, but it's really a versatile tool. You can add text boxes, um, images, all kinds of different things in here. But let me show you how to change the orientation on this just in case you want to go with the portrait here. Same process, file, page setup, and it's similar to the slides where you have to change your settings. I'm going down to custom, again, eight and a half by 11, and it changes it to a portrait. Now, when it comes to Google Drawings, one thing you can do is if you know that you're creating an image for something specific, let's say you want to change your Twitter profile picture. Now the Twitter profile pic is set for 500 pixels by 500 pixels and if you put an image of a different size in there it's either going to distort the image making it smaller or larger or it's going to force you to crop it. 
So let's set this so that it's going to be exactly the way it needs to be so I can look at it in its regular format. I'll go up here to File and down to Page Setup. But this time, instead of inches, I'm going to select Pixels. And you can see it changed the, those inches to the corresponding number of pixels. But I'm going to change this to 400 by 400. And this is for the profile pick. And then when I click OK, it turns it into this square. Now when I enter an image into here, as long as it fills up the square, it will be exactly the right size for the profile pick. Now you know on Twitter there's that background image, that long rectangular image. That one is 1500 pixels by 500 pixels. So again, I'm going to go to Page Setup, and I'm going to change this to pixels first. And now I'm going to make it 1500 by 500. And when I click OK, it sets that rectangular page there. And as long as your image fills up this space, it will be the right size to be in proportion when you copy and paste that into your Twitter profile. So these are just a couple of ways that you can use the page setup to allow for some more flexibility in your classroom. I hope these are some ideas that you can use in class. And as always, have a great day.